Hey folks, for OS Reviews. In this video, we're going to give a brief rundown of some popular operating systems currently on smartphones, uh, at least here in the United States. And we're going to give a brief comparison between some of the key features between them, although this is not going to be a video that incorporates every single operating system out there. For example, we don't have Mego OS uh, from the Nokia N9 here for comparison's sake. But we do have Windows Phone OS. We have Bada OS, which can be found on Samsung's uh, Wave phones and some other smartphones produced by Samsung. There's Firefox OS. There's the LG X. S class uh, operating system actually. There's Android, uh, which can be found in various different variants, uh, from you know Sony's different skin from TouchWiz on Samsung to the um, LG S class skin. So they're all different depending on the manufacturer. We have iOS from Apple and also Symbian, uh, which can be found on some Nokia devices. And so. Taking a look at the Windows Phone operating system first, I think that the key feature that can be found here is going to be simplicity and also the fact that you can organize your apps depending on uh, the way you really want it to. It's not too many things, there aren't too many things really going on. You have uh, your basic applications sty uh, stylized in this tile form factor that's very similar to uh, Windows 8. And so if you do use a Windows 8 computer, the transition between a Windows Phone and a desktop is going to be very simple and very easy. With that being said, you don't have the largest selection of games. Uh, but most of the applications run very, very smoothly just because Windows Phone is optimized to run even on slower uh, devices that don't have lightning fast processors, so, spe so to speak. So web browsing is the strength of Windows Phones, and overall it's a very easy to use operating system. The core functions are balanced nicely, but uh, one of the weaker aspects is going to be in gaming just because the processor might not be as fast or as demanding as an Android device, and also the uh, kind of marketplace is still developing compared to Android and also iOS. Otherwise, cameras tend to be very good on Windows phones, call quality tends to be pretty good, and performance in general tends to be very strong. So taking a look at the Bada OS next, now Bada OS is something that's designed only by Samsung. So this is a operating system that they built <coughs> using Linux, and um, it's, it's very different, but it's also something I think that compares directly to Firefox OS, just because Firefox is starting out and also Bada isn't something that's too terribly popular. But if you look at lower end smartphones, uh, this is something that can be found in a lot, of, uh, a lot of Samsung products. So if we take a look at this really quickly, you can see how the experience is very similar to a lot of Android Samsung products. Uh, it seems very similar as well. You have these different home screens and different widgets that you can customize. But the difference here is that Bada OS doesn't really require a fast processor to run very smoothly. For example, this phone right now, the Wave 525, requires only about a 800 megahertz CPU to run pretty smoothly. The web browsing experience is nice. Uh, it's about the same as Android devices are, although uh, some of the limitations include the fact that the screens aren't very high resolution and also the app uh, App Store or the applications you can download are also severely limited despite having Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, and an accelerometer. So this is basically for converging markets. It's not anything too significant, I would say, or too large of a threat to Android, but at the same time, it's not a bad operating system at all, especially if you just want some basic core functionalities and also a few web browsing functionalities thrown in. Taking a look next at the uh, Firefox OS, Firefox OS is a bit more advanced, I guess, than Bada in a sense that uh, it still kind of has a brighter future because there's a lot of more developers and it's not locked down to one manufacturer. We see ZTE, we also see Huawei and other companies starting to create more Firefox products. And basically we have a main screen here, we have some applications at the bottom. And the key thing here is that the OS is built on HTML5, so applications can be stored on the cloud. And it seems like the phone has a ton of apps, but really these are all cloud apps. So whenever you tap on something, it takes you to the internet version of that application. Same thing can be said about games. So you have a lot of games on here, but the require an internet access at all times to be played. So the benefit here is that we don't need a fast processor, just like on Bada, to run pretty smoothly. The downside here is that the marketplace is still developing, and also because it doesn't require uh, too fast of a processor, sometimes there's a bit of sluggish sluggishness if you're browsing the web and then using a lot of things that are really demanding, like the camera or, again, the web browser in general. So even though it's, it's a nice platform, multitasking is really nicely handled on Firefox OS. It's not as powerful, per se, as uh, perhaps Android or iOS would be. Taking a look next at the LG S-Class operating system, this is arguably the least smartphone-esque OS out of all of the uh, operating systems that we have here, even though it's a beautiful operating system with a ton of different transitions. From the lock screen, for example, you can, you can create different gestures to directly launch into different programs, and also it's very responsive. Uh, the sad thing here is that LG isn't really supporting these phones anymore, just like uh, Nokia isn't really supporting Mego anymore, so we don't see a lot of these anymore. But 
you do have some uh, key functionalities here like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, all of those are on here like most of these phones in front of you right now. Uh, but the key thing here is that we have four different home screens you can customize between applications, widgets, browser tabs, and also uh, different um, tabs you can use for contacts and the overall programs list can also be sorted back and forth and there is an accelerometer on board as well. Uh, I think that this is again the least smartphone-esque operating system just because the app store is severely uh, stunted by, I guess, LG. You can't really install too many apps instead, uh, rather than other than kind of Java programs you might want to sideload into the phone itself. And so it doesn't become an experience where you can play a lot of constant new games or HD games at all. Uh, even the web browsing is good, it's also a lot slower than the other products just because the processor on the S-Class phones are a lot more sluggish. They tend to range from 500 to 600 megahertz. And unlike the Samsung Bado S, you have a lot more transitions on here. So it takes the phone a lot slower to go through every every different program. And so overall, the experience becomes a lot more sluggish. Uh, and so it's not as popular, I find. So next we have Android, which is of course probably one of the more popular ones on this list. And I don't really need to do too many too much explaining here. Obviously, Android is a really powerful operating system because it allows for such a high level of customization depending on the manufacturer. So from Sony Xperia skin to Samsung's TouchWiz to LG's S Class, uh, so every manufacturer uh, like Xiaomi's MIUI has placed their own spin on top of it. And even the vanilla experience of Android is very powerful because you can customize it with your favorite widgets and the number of apps in the marketplace is just growing even every day. So it's a great option to go with even if you are a uh, smartphone and a, an advanced smartphone user or you're just starting out with your first smartphone. So of course the quality of the phones is going to significantly vary depending on the processor speed and the device that you actually get. But in general, Android I think has a very viable future and has uh, a very powerful crowd going up. Uh, before it. So it's probably the, one of the better positioned operating systems on this list. It suits both power users and first time smartphone users. Symbian. This is another operating system just like Migo, just like uh, the LG S class that's not really having a, a future anymore. But with that being said, there are still a ton of Symbian phones being produced. Uh, although Symbian smartphones, we're not seeing as many of uh, in, in 2015. With that being said, it still is comparable just because we have a lot of the core functions on here as well uh, that correlate. Uh, for example, we have access to Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and all the core services can be found on this particular phone as well. Uh, with that being said, again, Symbian is kind of limited by the fact that you don't have a lot of apps in terms of the games, uh, but you do have a lot of uh, productivity apps uh, such as office editing, ebook reading, and the transitions on here are a lot more rough. So you can see how everything is not as fluid or as smooth. It seems more like a relic of the past, which it is, but at the same time, it's not as antiquated as something as Windows Mobile is or should be. So even though all the core functions are here, this is really uh, kind of aimed still for the productivity folks that prefer this over Windows Phone uh, because you've probably used a Symbian device in the past. Uh, but otherwise, for general consumers, I would say this is something you should probably stay away from at this point. Um, the last thing on this list, I guess, would be iOS. And actually, we have one more device, but we'll see if we have time for that. And of course, iOS is another operating system, just like on Android. I don't need to do too much explaining on. It's simple to use, uh, but customization is slightly more limited just because you can't have any widgets or anything like that. Although it's super easy to use, and of course, one of the key functions here are going to be apps. So you can inst install thousands and thousands of applications, and you're limited only by the phone's memory. The processor is fast, it's snappy, it's responsive, and the operating system does a good job in terms of web browsing and also the core functionalities. And so it's great for, I guess, first-time smartphone users. And even if you're uh, kind of a fan and just continuing with Apple's uh, design over the years, it still is a good kind of OS to go with, I would say. And I guess like the last thing that I wanted to maybe have a quick look at would be a look back at WebOS. Although, of course, WebOS is probably the operating system on here that has the um, dimmest future, so to speak, out of all of these different operating systems. Just because it's already been discontinued, it's been sold by HP, it's now in LG's hands, and then it's not being used for smart appliances like televisions and refrigerators, and we're certainly not going to see this in another phone in the near future. So this is probably the most closed-off operating system on this entire list, just because it's no longer supported, and if you buy a new phone, you actually can't activate it anymore. So it's kind of like Windows Mobile in the sense that it's pretty much already dead. Uh, with that being said, stay uh, WebOS we loved at the time because it had a lot of multitasking uh, advanced capabilities, but like some of the other operating systems on the list, it was limited by the number of applications, such as games that you could install, and also general performance was slightly more sluggish than we would like, although it is a distant competitor to the iOS operating system and also Android.
So anyways, that was a quick run through of some of the more popular operating systems currently out there. Of course, there are many more that we can't cover in the span of this video, but hopefully, hopefully you guys found that informative. And so you guys can comment down below which operating system is your favorite and which of those you think will create more powerful phones and more potent devices in the future. Thanks for watching this video here at OS Reviews.